Welcome to part 10 of our Link G4X mini training series. In this tutorial, we're gonna be focusing on how to work with basics of programming for our triggers, as well as working with our trigger scope option to detect what type of pattern we're dealing with or what type of waveform output we have from our sensors. We have a lot to cover. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at programming some basic information for our trigger setup within our PC Link software and our Link G4X systems. Now, this is going to be a mini training tutorial. It's not super in depth. This is just looking at some of the basic information. We have a much more in depth training tutorial on this topic within Evans Performance Academy Link G4X training course, but this is gonna be a mini tutorial. Just to get your feet wet with understanding what's going on with programming or triggers. Let's jump in here and take a look. First thing we're gonna do is jump in and create a new window or layout to look at our trigger settings. It's gonna allow us to uh, program things a little bit easier and access that information. If we go here to new page, we'll go up to the top and we'll call this triggers. And then we're gonna move in here to our ECU settings into the side here and we're gonna jump into our area here called triggers. We find we have our trigger setup, trigger one, trigger two. Trigger one is gonna be our crank. Trigger two is gonna be our home or cam signal. Let's go here to our trigger setup we're gonna double click on this option here first. We're gonna to start to bring these windows into our screen here to allow us to start to see all this information. So we're gonna move our trigger setup here. This is the details for the actual pattern that the link is going to be looking for. Um, let's go into our ECU settings here again. We'll bring in our trigger one option here. This is gonna program a little bit more specific detailed information as to what type of pattern in terms of the tooth count we're looking for, and then also what type of sensor is fitted for our trigger one or our crank trigger. We're also gonna to need to bring in our arming voltage threshold table here, assuming that we're dealing with a VR magnetic sensor for optical hull, which is gonna be a square wave output. We won't have to worry about this, but let's just bring this in here. I just clicked on the table and clicked H, give a little bit of color here so we can see things a little bit easier. Jump back into ECU settings here. Let's go to our trigger two, which is our home or our cam sensor and we wanna go in and take a look at these details right here. Let's go lock this, lock it into place here using our lock options. And let's go up top here and do our arming threshold. Again, this is for uh, VR magnetic sensors. We wanna have this in our window here. And then lastly, we'll go to ECU settings and we'll bring in our calibrate option. Now the calibrate window is gonna allow us to go in and actually check the timing with a timing light to make sure our trigger offset here is correct. We're not gonna get into how to do that here in this tutorial. We're just gonna talk about our settings right here, making sure these are configured correctly and also working with our trigger scope option to verify that we have the correct settings in here. So very first thing I wanna talk about here is our trigger setup. Under the trigger mode, we need to consider what type of pattern we're dealing with. Either it's gonna be multi-tooth or a multi-tooth missing tooth. So you have a 60 missing tooth pattern, you'll be choosing multi-tooth. If you have a 24, evenly spaced pattern, uh, that would be Toyota 1JZ, 2JZ engine, you'd use multi-tooth. So it depends on what type of pattern you're dealing with. We also have OEM patterns that aren't gonna fit into a multi-tooth or missing tooth types of options. These are more specific where there might be extra teeth in the pattern, more complex um, uh, programming so that Link has essentially done the work for us in terms of configuration and our settings here. So we have to consider what you're working with. You have a plug and play application, you'll be most likely finding whatever that plug and play base map that you have uh, installed for your plug and play, um, your plug and play link that you're working with. You'll have one of these options here you're gonna be choosing. We see we have many, many options down here. A lot of patterns are supported. Now what I have to choose for my engine here is a multi-tooth missing. I'm gonna choose this and click okay. There's an R RPM filtering. We generally wanna have this left at a value of one here. Um, this is going to provide a filtering on the RPM registration coming from our trigger one sensor, uh, which is our crank sensor. Let's move in here to our trigger one option. Now this is where we need to go and figure out what type of sensor we're dealing with. We either have a VR magnetic style sensor or a Hall effect optical style sensor. The difference between these two, we see our trigger types here, either reluctor or optical hole. Reluctor, it is also known as VR magnetic. That's gonna generate its own voltage field as the tooth passes over the sensor. That is going to generate a sinusoidal wave and the amplitude of the sinusoidal wave grows as engine speed grows. So if you have a two wire sensor, traditionally they're going to be a reluctor magnetic VR, all the same 
uh, same thing, just different terminologies, type of circuit or sensor you're dealing with. If you have a three wire, chances are you're gonna have an optical hull. Now that's not always the case, but most times for most engines, that will tell you what type of sensor you're dealing with. Now we can use the trigger scope, which is gonna allow us to actually capture the raw waveforms coming out of our trigger one, trigger two, to verify what type of sensor we're dealing with. I'm gonna go ahead and select optical hull because that's actually what I have fitted to my engine. Now we do wanna mention this real quick here. If you have Reluctor, the VR magnetic, you will be dealing with your arming threshold tables. So there's arming threshold one and two. We need to program the values in here these act as essentially a filter, so we have to go in and be above the voltage that we're specifying here with the output from a reluctor sensor in order for it to register as a valid pulse count from the trigger. Now, because I have an optical hull here, we don't need to worry about the arming threshold tables, and in fact, if I select this, this table here isn't referenced at all. So I'm gonna find the same thing for my trigger too. Yep, we see here that table drops out. The same thing for the trigger two on my engine, I have a optical hull sensor, and again, we'll verify that with our trigger scope here in just a little bit. Now, our pull-up here, we need to consider if we have an optical hull, we will need a pull-up being on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on for both of these. Let's go ahead and do that here. And then we find here the trigger edge. This is gonna be where it looks at that square wave pattern coming out of my pulse for the trigger one, trigger two. We're either gonna be looking at it as a falling edge where it goes a high pulse and coming downwards. That's gonna count it on that downwards movement um, of the trigger, uh, the trigger pattern, I should say, of the pulse. If it's a rising edge, it's gonna count the pulse when the, the signal goes from uh, the low to high status. So that'll be just on that square wave type of pulse pattern. So falling edge is generally what we wanna select with an optical hull. Again, that's kind of specific to the sensor that you're dealing with, but falling is most of the time the option that will be used. I'm gonna have that for both of these options here for my trigger one, trigger two. Now the multi-tooth position, this is gonna be telling the link where to expect the trigger wheel for our crank trigger or trigger one. It can either be on the cam or the crank. So this is gonna literally be where you have that, uh, that trigger wheel mounted. So if it's gonna be on the crank, you'll have a traditional crank pickup. If it's on the cam, that would be, let's say, a Honda BDH series engine where it has a distributor and the OEM wheel resides within the distributor which is driven off the cam. So you have to specify where the actual uh, trigger wheel is going to be found on the engine mechanically. Um, in my case, it is gonna be on the crank for this option here. Now the tooth count, this is how many total teeth you have on your trigger wheel. Now because I have a multi-tooth missing, when we're telling the link the tooth count, we need to include all of the teeth, including what would be missing. So I actually have a 12 tooth trigger wheel that's missing one tooth. So in this case, I have to go and specify here as 12 and then the missing teeth would be one. Now the number of gaps would be one and the sink tooth here, we're gonna keep that here as a, uh, a value of one. That's um, some more additional details that we're not gonna cover here for this tutorial, but um, we wanna go ahead and uh, leave our programming as such right now. Now in the trigger two, uh, we're gonna see here that we have our type set, our pull up set, the edge is falling, and then this is our sync mode, what we have in terms of the pulse pattern out of our, our specific configuration here. Now this is gonna be multi-tooth missing, so I have 12 total teeth that would be found on my trigger wheel missing one, and then I have one pulse coming out of my home signal or the trigger two signal, my cam signal. So I have this here as my cam pulse one. So I'll have that selected here. We're not gonna choose any of the other options. I have a pretty basic uh, trigger pattern here on this engine. Now what we're gonna find here is if we do a store or store that, we can go in and test this on the trigger scope to verify that everything is gonna be functional. Essentially, we're gonna look at the engine under cranking speeds and just verify that everything is right before we move on to do any actual further tuning. What I would recommend to do under the configuration here is if we're taking a look, uh, we're finding that we have all of our details here. Program doesn't look in this uh, configuration window here, we have the available fuel window we need to take a look at here. So under fuel setup, we'll go into our fuel main. We'll just bring that into our window right here. And our fuel main, we're gonna go into our ejection mode and we're gonna turn our fuel injectors off because if we're cranking, we don't want the injectors to pulse with our link here that could flood out the engine. So we wanna make sure to turn that off, that turns the injectors completely off. 
Let's go back in here to our triggers and we're gonna crank over our engine. Now what we're gonna do here is move into our trigger scope option so we can verify our settings here under cranking conditions. So we're gonna go up into our ECU controls and do the trigger scope. Now what I'm gonna do is crank over my engine here and I'm gonna go to capture. That's gonna capture my trigger one and trigger two outputs. We can verify that we are going to have that pattern that we've selected here, 12 missing, 12 tooth missing one, and then one on our cam. So we should see 11 pulses on our trigger for every one pulse on our home or cam. So this is our crank, this is our cam. Let's go ahead and do this right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to crank over my engine here. And I'm gonna to go to capture, give this a second, and it should go ahead and capture it. Now we can see it's captured the data here and we can double check this. Let me go ahead and stop cranking the engine over. So we can use our up or down arrows here to focus in or out. So if we click on this, we can focus in. And what we're looking for here when we're focusing in is number one, the pattern that we're dealing with, is it correct it's from what we programmed here? So that's all the details are, are, are accounted for. And is the trigger type select it correctly in terms of the waveform output. So let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit further. So what we're seeing here is that first let's check our pattern. So we're looking for the total pulses. There's gonna be a gap and that's gonna signify, if we're looking at this, from the first tooth after the gap, this would be, let's call this the first tooth, to the missing tooth right here. If let's count the total teeth, we should have 12 as we're finding here, we've defined, we have 12 teeth. And that's what I've counted on my actual uh, my trigger, my crank trigger. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now notice we're missing one. That would be the twelfth tooth. So we're telling it there's twelve teeth missing one. So that pattern is correct. And we also find here that we only have a single trigger two, which is our home or cam pulse. We've programmed here cam pulse one. So we've successfully programmed the correct pattern here in our details. And then the next thing is going to be checking our trigger type do we have the correct trigger type selected for the sensor we're working with? Remember, if you look at the sensor, you see a two wire that's generally gonna be a reluctor sensor. If it's three wire, it's usually optical hull. So in my case, they're three wire and I've wired it up and I'm, I know the sensors are optical hull, but just looking at the visual verification, I would see it's three wire, so it should, as I'm selecting this line up to what we're finding here. We're looking for a square, square wave type of signal. So what we're finding here is it goes pulses on, pulses on, pulses on, pulses on, and we can see how that's gonna go here all throughout. Now, what that's gonna verify is that the optical hull for both trigger one and trigger two are correct because we see that same pulse pattern. We do not see a sinusoidal type of waveform output as we'd find if we had a reluctor type of sensor. So this gives us further verification what we programmed here is correct. And if we go here to our digital inputs, we're finding this would be everything for our digitals what we can see here is we have our trigger signal one, trigger, trigger signal two, and what we're finding is that we're getting a signal out of these. So if we're cranking it over here and we're not finding that we're getting any pulse here in our pattern, we would go here and take a look at our trigger signal status. Are we getting a pulse? Is it showing a yes or a no? If we're seeing this as all blank and it's a no status, that means that we have some of our configuration details probably aren't account for correctly so we can see that a little bit further. And then here is gonna be further trigger states so we can take a look at it. some more information here for our trigger one, trigger two in terms of our voltage thresholds here. So it looks like it's pulsing here to about 10 volts, 9.37 volts here for our uh, crank and about 9.6 volts here for our trigger scope two, that's our cam. So again, just more information now, if you're working with Link and you're trying to troubleshoot this and figure out what's going on with your camera crank patterns, you can go here to save and save this as a trigger scope log and you can save this to your desktop or wherever you'd like. And you can email that to a uh, tech support at Link if they're trying to help you figure out configuring your settings for your engine. If something's not working right, you're not getting uh, any proper RPM reading or your engine isn't firing off you be able to go in and work with them and they can probably troubleshoot a little bit further from uh, looking at the trigger scope because that is some very basic information that we definitely need to know. So that's gonna be it here, taking a look at setting up some of our basic details for our triggers within our Link system. Uh, we do have a bit more in-depth tutorials looking at programming our triggers, specifically looking at programming our reluctors and setting up our arming threshold tables, also going through and programming and taking a look at some more details we're actually setting things like our trigger offset when we're trying to crank over the engine, making sure our timing is synced before we actually fire it off, or even when the engine is running, making sure we have things synced up 
in terms of what we're commanding for spark timing, delivering to the engine and what the link is programming, making sure everything is 100% is sync there. There is a ton of information within our G4X training course that we offer from evansperformanceacademy.com. You can subscribe or you can purchase the course outright and uh, you can definitely check out those details. So that's gonna wrap it up here for this mini training tutorial series. Hopefully these were helpful getting you started with your G4X system. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the school taking a look at our G4X training course.